So in this episode, I'm looking at Okinawan karate, looking at takedowns using their indigenous martial arts shima, which is a form of sumo, and also Japanese sumo as well. So some things I want to point out first in the beginning, karate has a big emphasis on posture and maintaining posture. The upright posture helps prevent you from being taken down, but if you look at most grappling arts, a lot of setups for throws require you to actually have a bent over posture to kind of get underneath of your opponent's center. What's interesting is that you actually see that in snippets of karate kata, such as rohai or the opening of kusankudai. Another thing I want to point out are the head turns in kata. It's gotten to the point where it's more of an aesthetic thing, where you're having sharp lines, you're trying to create intention with where you're going to move next. But if you think about head turns in grappling, head turns actually help you spot the ground. And by spotting the ground, you're actually turning your spine ultimately to where your opponent is about to fall. Because you're doing that, you're actually optimizing the amount of force you're able to take your opponent towards the direction that you want them to go. Finally, in karate, everyone knows about the deep stances. Generally speaking, people are graded by how low their stances are because it looks more aesthetically pleasing. But again, if you look in grappling arts, the stances actually are snapshots of what you're doing to your opponent. So you can imagine the stances are ending points of the takedown. All right, shameless plug time. So I'm building a website to try to catalog all these kata breakdowns and also build a community, have a discussion forum, have articles by uh, members and stuff, and really create a one-stop shop. So this is still in the preliminary phase, but if you go to karatebreakdown.com, sign up for that newsletter, and you'll get notifications when the site is live to join. And this is really about bringing back practical karate with emphasis on kata applications for self-defense. All right, so I wanna start off by showing this clip that's not necessarily grappling related, but it's from a grappling style from Mongolia. The instructor here is showing how to swim the arm on the inside, kind of like you're pummeling at the forearm level rather than the entire arm and under the armpit. It. You're actually using that to break their grip on your uniform. And if you guys never seen bulk or Mongolian wrestling, it's a beautiful art. There's a lot of crazy throws. It's the ancestors of judo. And we actually see this movement in uh, karate katas in Gojuru and other styles as well. And another one that's kind of an honorable mention that's kind of my all time favorite sumo wrestler and uses a high block or what we call a high block as a forearm strike to the head KOing his opponent. What's cool is that initial arm leads the head to the forearm just like how karate blocks are normally taught. Most of y'all know the 180 turns are usually a takedown and this high low motion in Pinan Nidan is kind of like a drag. Notice how if you have a grip on somebody you drag and you rotate they're kind of stuck to you kind of like a slingshot. You see these type of takedowns all the time when a gi or a grip is allowed to be used. Keeping with that theme, just be cautious of where you're chambering your hands when you do kata, right? When it's at your waist, most likely you're grabbing onto your opponent's lower half and pulling them to a direction as well. I mean, just look at the deep stances here and the swing motion of the arms. I wish I could double punch somebody in the face and the groin, but realistically, I'm probably grabbing onto something and turning a big wheel, trying to use my deep stance to turn them over to take them down to the ground. And of course, we have the tried and true Nahachi Katas. You can see with the foot motion here, you're kind of kicking them to kind of lift their center of gravity up and then using the arms to kind of throw them over. You can think of it as different ranges. So from a distance, you're trying to sweep the leg out and then that off balances your opponent and that's going to allow you to manipulate their upper body. In a closer range, like the clinch range, you're actually using your arms to turn them and then tripping their foot so that they can't take a step. I love this clip here because the sumo wrestler actually has double underhooks to get underneath his opponent's center and he keeps scooping up until he's ready to make the twist and block out his foot. Kata also has full turns into a deep stance with the arms swinging downward. Most likely you have a grip on your opponent and then you rotate the opposite direction with your legs sticking out. This is a way to drag them over your leg and take them down to the ground. If the leg lifts up, you know, you're able to add a little more lift to that, but conceptually it's the same thing. All right, this is an oldie but goodie. Just wrapping the arm um, with this shoulder lock from standing. You see that in sumo here. Kind of a rare occurrence, but it's a great example of kata interpretation. Another one here is turning like a big wheel. One thing that's cool is with that movement is you're actually 
doing a nukete beforehand so you're essentially uh getting the underhook or spearing through their guard so that you could get underneath their center this one's cool from chinto where you're wrapping up the leg you scoop up their leg to take him down you see this in sumo as well and that wraps it up for me don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and support the cause we're trying to bring back practical karate